I don't believe you. Zombie Takeout never existed, and even if they did, I don't co-host it. Hello and welcome to episode 409 of Zombie Takeout, the B-Movie and Cult Movie Podcast. I'm John. And I'm Scotto. And without any further ado, on to this week's movie, which is from 2017, The Velocipaster. Of course, well, before we get started, I would like to thank Jen for reminding me about this one. I first heard (laughs) out about it in, I think, 2018, maybe early 2019. Um, I thought I'd put it on the list, but I guess not, um, and I forgot about it. Uh, a few I weeks ago, have sworn we had two. Yeah, uh, a few weeks ago, she messaged me about it on Facebook, reminded me about it. As I mentioned, I would like to thank her, but you'll hear the reveal. <laughs> and honestly, I was I was ready to um, I was ready to tap out this week. I was like uh, just dead mm-hmm. and just I don't know if I can record it. That's why we're not doing the hearing. I uh-huh. mean, because it was just like <laughs> well, yeah, we aren't recording the hearing this week because the album we're planning to do, which will be next week, is almost two hours long. <laughs> we never looked into how long the album was until yeah, I forgot. It was, it was midnight your time. Uh-huh. <laughs> I opened it up and I'm like, an hour and forty four minutes. Yeah. But uh, I and I was, was kind of busy this. today, so I was happy to put that off. I was not going to miss this for the world, though. This one. <laughs> uh, and without any further ado, um, on to the sponsors. Of course, the impromptu pause summary sponsored by Zucker Abrams and Zucker, who would like to remind you that they already did most of this shit like 40 years ago. And also brought to you by Ninjas, China's chief export. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. So we have... Um... We begin with a pastor who uh, whose parents are murdered in front of him. And who looks and, remarkably like Michael C. Hall. Dexter. And, yeah, and uh, the pastor looks like uh, Jonathan uh, Bolton, the uh, <laughs> yeah, head yeah. of that. And he's, and he's still Security. not over Macho Grande. <laughs> and uh, he... Um, so this pastor advises him to go travel for some reason, which uh, he does. He goes to what obviously really was China. Mm-hmm. And, um, of course, the first person you see in China is straight from Crouching Tiger. And uh, then they're ninjas, which, yeah. oh, well. Chinese ninjas. <laughs> Chinese ninjas. <laughs> then you, um, so uh, he gets... He gets this uh, this tooth that uh, he's held on that that this person running from the ninjas it's large gives... animal tooth just to clarify that yes a large animal tooth uh, dragon's tooth if you will they I think they called it mm. and uh, it burns into his hand and he's immediately back home but uh, he feels this pain in his hand and he uh, constantly dreams about it. And uh, it turns out, well, he turns into a T-Rex, a very lifelike, realistic-looking T-Rex, I might add. Although, when his hands just transform, they're actually bigger than when he fully transforms. Yes. And and, um, I can't keep a straight face while I'm doing this. Um, He he turns into a T-Rex... And uh, he kills, well, he kills bad people. First, it starts... Um, With the pimp, who we think is going to be the central villain. I was kind of relieved that he wasn't... Pretty much, yeah, yeah. And then uh, he, he winds up killing a bunch more people. Uh, of course, he uh, befriends the hooker with the heart of gold. You've you got to have one of those. Mm-hmm. And um, um, they, they have a relationship, but they keep getting attacked by ninjas. And um, it leads to a showdown. Well, with it leads the... to that part of Kentucky Fried Movie. I can't think of the name, but it's the really long part. Oh, it's, um, oh, man. You know what I'm talking about if you've seen Kentucky Fried Movie. If yes, you haven't, you I don't. I can't remember. But it, it's the Kung Fu movie parody. 
oh, was it fi- something with the fist? I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna that's gonna drive me nuts. <laughs> um, but yeah, he uh, winds up uh, confronting this uh, group of ninjas who are a rival church too, and uh, polarity ensues. Eh, um, I did like the beginning. It did have me on its side from the very beginning. Um, he walks out of church after a sermon, greets his parents from a distance, you know, waves to them, and suddenly their car blows up. But when it cuts back to the shot that would show their car blowing up, it was just the street and said, VFX car on fire. I loved that. Right. And that that is pretty much the opening salvo. That is Mm -hmm. like, if you don't like this one... Yeah. Turn, turn this off now because <laughs> this is going to be a whole movie of this joke. And that and then when the older priest is consoling him and having him drink some wine, he says, "That's what parents do. They I die." Know. And then that we yeah. is one of the funniest damn lines, honestly. Yeah, I mean, honestly, okay. Then we get this great grindhouse parody title sequence. Yeah. At the end of which, did you notice what the music did at the very end of the titles? No. It, um, the guitar to... plays a little bit of the Jurassic Park theme. Oh. Uh... <laughs> and for me, that's when it was all downhill. I, I liked it up to there. Because um, then he goes to China. Um, yeah, the China was very cringy. There's a fine line between parodying raci- racism and seeming racist. I don't think this movie knows where it is. Well, because there wasn't much of a wink with this, you know, (laughs) like the the fact that there are ninjas in China and the, you know, the the font. The the... the old priest saying, what did the Chinese say? How how Eastern? Oh, or something. Oh, that's right. Um, He looks his compass and he says, like, China is East. Which is, which is, I mean, I guess that's the wink you're getting, you know, because... Um, I did appreciate when he finally transforms. It's this obviously paper mache raptor. Oh my god! I think when I worked at Groupon, we had a T Rex. It's actually online. The T Rex in our lobby. Mm. <laughs> I think uh, it was one of the first times one of those suits have been used, and uh, it was way more realistic than this. <laughs> <laughs> Although I, it started to get in trouble for me. When he kills the mugger who's attacking the hooker in the park, and we see this severed doll head roll past. <laughs> it, it was just trying too hard to be... I have self-aware here, but it really was just trying to, too hard to do Zucker Abrams. And they, they use the, the doll head gag a few times. Yeah, yeah. This. yeah. You know, in the morning after, there are these obvious like push-ins when he's, you know... Telling you, know, he's panicking about what happened. You know. Now, was the pimp trying to do Jack Black, or was he trying to do Tony Clifton, or was he doing both? Probably more Tony Clifton, given that he's a very seventies kind of pimp. True, true. Um, and then it's been a while since I've complained about a montage, <laughs> but this wasn't just a montage. This was a pop punk montage. <laughs> the worst we have kind one of in, montage. Um, didn't we have one in uh, last week's movie too? If we did, I was enjoying the movie too much to care. Um, it was this the one party didn't have that scene. problem. Well, the, okay, the party yeah. montage, yeah. which was was fucking hilarious. The yeah. party montage. This in, was in just that, a straight up training montage with pop punk. And, of course, the Chinese ninjas are the central villains. You know, I, and when he... Also, the joke that killed, really killed it for me, when he's talking to the old priest and trying to explain, you know, about to tell him that, you know, I turn into a dinosaur, um, when he says, you know, I'm different, the priest says, you're not, di- you're not that different. There are plenty of men like you in the church. Uh, and, of course... <laughs> The Macho Grande scene. An actual, like, war flashback from the old priest, which made no sense. Oh, of course. Um, and they went into all of this backstory on the on this side character, the old priest. And then there's Ollie, his war buddy, this beardy guy 
who was just like a stock budget low stock low budget actor. Yeah. Like even the way he acted, I we've seen in a billion low budget movies. I, now what I liked about the Vietnam flashback though, was the building this character, this other thing. Uh, I mean, you know, of course, something bad is going to happen. He's talking about she's all I'm fighting for and stuff. Mm-hmm. The fact that she was there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like, wait, what? <laughs> the only real gore in the movie. Yes. Because yes. that's what was missing from this movie was gore, among other things. Um, I did like the dinosaur makeup during this, the seance. They're trying to do this exorcism. More of a seance with this Egyptian statue. I don't know. But he starts to transform. And the makeup actually looked pretty good. Now, Not the gloves. I thought that was seance. Trey Parker. Yeah. I thought they actually got Trey Parker somehow <laughs> to do the movie. I'm like, wait, is that? Now, there's an odd sex scene because <laughs> all of the shots are kind of in windows, like, you know, different, like, smaller windows on the screen. It's with this loud, obnoxious music. It seemed like it was referencing something from the 90s, but I don't know what the reference was. Yeah, I'm not really sure either what that was about. I think with their relationship, the best part about it was when you before they began the montage and you're expecting them to kiss, mm-hmm. and instead they high five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was I, I did appreciate that. Um, <laughs> I also liked after the sex scene um, how they showed like the movie thus far in high speed. That oh yeah. <laughs> um, but the whole Father Wei Chang thing was just straight out of fucking Kentucky Fried movie. Except when they did this whole, like, weird, convoluted plan of getting everyone addicted to their cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> well, wasn't there, like, a drug-running thing in Kentucky Fried, too? Oh, I don't remember that. Yeah, okay, it's been too long. I feel like there was, like, an organized crime angle there, too. Um, and then Doug, the father, the, the pastor, his brother is one of the ninjas. The brother who they've never mentioned before. Oh, my God, I love this part. <laughs> <sighs> It's just completely out of nowhere, and apparently he's Chuck. You know, he's the kid. He's the guy who gets no love, no, just disappears. Think about. <laughs> Wait, just take a step back and think about what they've done here. They have these flashbacks with his parents earlier on, mm-hmm. and you think they're just happy things. You're, right. you're he's my an only best child. son. You're yeah, and then to like, in the middle of the movie, retcon. <laughs> yeah. That the, he had, there's actually a brother in all of those scenes. He's not getting any attention. <laughs> they play this flashbacks again to show him being there. Like, what? And then they make a big deal out of this, and there's this big face-off between the brothers, and it this g- <laughs> and this gag where you know the brother has this magical sort of his ancestors, and then that he you know puts in the ground, and the, the pastor just calls it to him, you know himself. Because they have the same the ancestors. Same ancestors yeah. And then he just stabs him with the sword. <laughs> to, to end it. Like, build up for nothing. And yes. then, of course, you know, we get the actual full Velocipaster transformation, which was a paper pushé T Rex, which I did get a bit of a kick out of. I mean, he, he's like, how is he even walking in that thing? Yeah. Like, yeah, how is he, was he crouched over with, like, the. Yeah. And the last thing in my notes, he used to be the Velocipaster, but then he took an arrow to the knee. <laughs> Wei Chang shoots him with an arrow tipped with the antidote to the, the curse that turns him into the, the Velocipaster. And then, of course, he has a final scene where, you know, the girlfriend who he thought was dead earlier is saved and they, you know, have a final scene together. Uh, and then, like, um, I, I liked one where she had her quote unquote death scene. Mm-hmm. The other ninjas get excited about it and just stand yeah. there. <laughs> uh, okay. Now, I do have a bit of trivia. Um, director sure. Brendan Steer thought of the idea in 2010 while he was attending the School of Visual Arts in Manhattan after his phone auto corrected Velociraptor to Velocipaster. <laughs> An auto correct. But the autocorrect led to this movie. movie, yes. And then he made a trailer, which I'm sure was very entertaining. It just should have stopped at the trailer stage. Um, on the sequels and remakes? 
on a sequels and remakes. Brendan Steer wants to do a sequel to the movie as he believes the world of Velocipaster is so, quote, permissible and fun. Brendan <laughs> Steele shared a sneak peek at the of the script, peek at the script over on Twitter, first making the making the announcing first announcing that a sequel script has officially been written and is set to start filming at some point. I mean, it'd be interesting to see a, um, I don't know, maybe a tighter script. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. That, that, that was the whole thing of this movie was that you, you go back to the VFX card, you know, mm-hmm. but, but it is just loosey goosey. Yeah. Yeah. A tighter script wouldn't help. Yeah, it probably wouldn't fit. Or even a budget. I don't know. It's just, uh, it, it was No, you don't need was. a budget. You just need more creative jokes. Hmm. And I think maybe it was made for millennials who, who were too, are too young to have seen Zaz. We grew up on Zaz. Um, although you loved it, so I don't know. Um, you know, it's I saw all the jokes coming. Which was the problem. Anyway, on to Brains. On to Brains. I'm going to. Like I said, I saw the jokes coming and the whole Chinese thing got a little racist looking. So, anyway. You? Yeah, it's a... Uh, <laughs> they, they, uh, they're a little cringy. But, uh, you know, I'm going to give it a four. You know, it's a fun movie. It's... Um, <laughs> the, the, <laughs> they have some pretty good jokes in there. It's not a particularly long movie either, so... Hour 10 on Tubi. It's yeah. free on Tubi. The links will be in, uh, in all the relevant places. All right, so, so what have uh, we learned? Uh, we learned that... Um, I forgot what I learned. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> uh, there's a surprisingly little demand for uh, hooker doctor lawyers. And I learned that while you can't fight evil with a macaroni duck, you apparently can fight it with a paper mache dinosaur. <laughs> Alright, that's it for The Velocipaster. Until next time, we'll be reviewing Hairspray, the original, the Don Waters version. This is our Jerry Stellar tribute. Until then, oh, of course, yeah. always remember, never forget, wherever you go in life, there you are. There you are. <laughs>